Hello YouTube. So I decided to do a video on how to Dragon Con. And I do this because I just got back from the Amtrak trip that uh, that took me to and from Atlanta. And I thought that it would be useful just to offer my thoughts as I've been going to Dragon Con for several years now. Uh, to offer my thoughts on how to do it in case you haven't done this kind of thing before, in case you haven't been to conventions like this before, or just have questions about what it's like to go to this convention. So Dragon Con is a general purpose science fiction and fantasy convention. It has tracks for a whole lot of other things. Uh, this isn't unusual. There's a lot of other cons that have a general set of topics that they cover, but, they, but they're not devoted entirely to a narrow band of topics. Um, so I started going to Dragon Con in 2014. Eventually I got a what's called an eternal membership, meaning I paid a certain fairly large chunk of change uh, up front and I get uh, every year a, um, a, uh, a badge. Uh, for me to uh, to attend and uh, so yeah I've been doing it for a while I guess uh, this last visit um, was I think my eighth eighth year of going there happens every uh, every uh, late summer early fall uh, around the Labor Day weekend um, and I think it's it's five days I think it's five days um, so let's let's go through a list of topics, and I, I will be putting my notes uh, notes for this online. I'll stick it in the subject of the video, in case you're somebody who prefers to have a document that excuse me that you can look at uh, rather than uh, going through a video. So, in terms of tickets, you have a lot of flexibility, but if uh, depending on what you know that you're going to be doing there's a better and worse way to handle this you can buy tickets for the entire conference and stay the whole time uh, or you can just go for the weekend or just for a day uh, you can buy tickets ahead of time which is usually a good idea because they can sell out and you don't want to, uh, to do any travel to get there and then not get in uh, in case I haven't mentioned it it's in Atlanta Georgia and the tickets are badges that you wear around your neck on a lanyard. They are checked all over the place. Uh, I don't think trying to sneak in would be a particularly good idea and it probably wouldn't be successful. Uh, people will ask you to show your badge um, all over the place. So I wouldn't try and cheat the system. Generally, again, buy ahead of time. Uh, and if, if you know that you're going to go for the en entire time, buy for the entire time. Don't do it uh, day by day and feel it out because you'll pay more and you'll have to face more uncertainty. In terms of how to get to Dragon Con, if you live in or near Atlanta, this is pretty easy uh, and you probably don't need my advice. Otherwise, you can carpool with friends if you have a whole bunch of friends locally that are going. Uh, you could get airplane tickets, uh, or you could take uh, uh, take one of the trains that goes across the U.S. or Megabus or something like uh, like that. I take Amtrak because I live in New York City, um, but and really I think Amtrak is a really great way to do it if you're in the lower 48 U.S. states and if there's a reasonably direct way to get there. Uh, Amtrak can be slow. I find air, uh, airports stressful and airplanes stressful, so that's what I prefer. But really, you have a lot of options, um, but I again, think about Amtrak. In terms of what's there and the local geography, there's three very well-connected hotels, the, the Hyatt, the Marriott, and the Hilton. Those are the, the, the three main hotels that you'll be attending most of the stuff in if you're going to roughly the same set of tracks that I am or, or, or the most common tracks. Then there's two less well-connected hotels that have some content, which are the Weston and the Sheraton. Uh, they're within easy walking distance. Um, so you, if you spread things out, then you'll probably have a few things that you might go to in one of those, or some tracks are mostly over there. 
There's vendor halls and a nearby complex of temporary mall space. And don't scoff at this. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, like you'll have anything from uh, oftentimes uh, common uh, movie stars and stuff like that signing autographs and some of these you'll have a lot of very cool swag uh, outfits people selling custom dice and role-playing game uh, books stuff like that uh, like you, you're I, I think it's worth at least browsing through uh, uh, through them um, so all, all of the above are in a short walking distance there's also the Georgia Aquarium which uh, one night is a Dragon Con night for that uh, there's probably a whole bunch of other local events that are uh, less official that you can go to, but that's the local geography. In terms of where to stay, the three main hotels are great, but they're hard to get into. Some of them have legacy programs where if you stay one year, you can automatically get a reservation for the next year, which is great if you can get one of those. But if you can't, then those reservations are going to be rooms that you can't book and so you might have a tough time getting into the three main hotels. Also, the three main hotels are a little bit pricey, um, but it's really nice to have uh, a hotel that's either one of the main uh, um, one of the main conference venues or very nearby because this gives you space to easily pop up to your room to rest, recharge your phone. Uh, have a, some nice private restroom space because otherwise you're going to be using all the public spaces and they're not always as clean. You can change clothes. Certainly if you're doing cosplay, you're going to want to have this uh, as an option. And you can do it with a very light time penalty. The other ho uh, two hotels mostly are good for the same reason. They're just a little bit less convenient. There's also some non-Dragon Con hotels that are in the immediate area that are almost as good. They might be cheaper. And if you like residence style hotels, uh, meaning that they have a fridge and a microwave and some other uh, home amenities, they might be even better. The nearby residence inn is really great for this and it is a little bit cheaper, I think. Um, if you have friends in the area, you might stay on their couch. Although this again might mean that there's some travel time to get to their couch and you might need to travel with them. You might get some rooms together with people you kind of know and any of the above. Um, I do not recommend uh, 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 getting any of the hotels that are not in the immediate area. The airport hotels in particular are cheap and nice, and they have a dedicated shuttle to get you to the uh, convention area. But the shuttle hours are pretty limited, and it's just not a good experience. I did it on my first year. Uh, I. I Waiting for that shuttle or possibly missing it was not a good time. I ended up needing to get a cab uh, at, at least twice that year and just the long wait, it, it wasn't good. So try not to do that. I, I realize it might seem tempting. Uh, you can try it if you want to, but I'm, I'm warning against it. Um, in terms of what's what, what is Dragon Con? Dragon Con is, co is composed of some main events. Um, there's some side attractions, some live music, stuff like that. But mostly the, the, the meat of Dragon Con is mostly a bunch of themed tracks that each run a set of talks and panels according to their theme. Uh, sometimes they'll get a star, like you might get, um, uh, you, you might find that the actor who played one of your uh, favorite characters is doing a QA. and a uh, some of them are fan panels, some of them are just goofy people telling each other stories, stuff like that. Uh, the, the quality on a lot of these things varies a lot, so don't expect everything to be excellent. Um, the, the tracks are on a great variety of topics. There's a science track, there's a professional wrestling track, there's a Star Trek track. There's a lot of other things, so go looking for the tracks that you want. Um, and the live music can also be really fun. Sometimes it's just a small uh, band in a small open area uh, doing filking or something like that, um, usually non-amplified. Sometimes it's a big name band or a themed party uh, that got a, uh, got a ballroom. Uh, it's worth noting that there are lines for a lot of content, and this may impact what you go see. Sometimes rooms fill up. 
and sometimes you're not in the mood to wait uh, wait in line. Sometimes the the lines loop uh, around a lot indoors or go outdoors up and down stairs. It can be a little bit ridiculous. Uh, sorry about that. Um, you should also, if there's a if there's an event that you know is going to be really popular, then arriving early can mean that you're spending less time waiting in line, and you'll probably be a little bit more comfortable. But it does mean that you'll be waiting longer. Usually, you'll get into most events eventually unless they're both known to be absolutely amazing and have not been given a big enough room. Uh, in terms of what's where, the uh, all of the um, Dragon Con hotels, uh, all five of them have some giant ballrooms for some really big ticket events. This will mostly be the, the main three, but the other two also have some. And your experience will probably differ from mine because you probably won't be going to the exact same tracks that, uh, that I usually go to. Merch is in the malls. Uh, the malls usually will have lines to get in because they have a certain number of people by the fire code that can be inside at any given time. But once you're inside, you can mostly walk around where you like. Um, uh, the, 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 merch, the merch areas, they are a lot of fun. Most tracks have... Uh, dedicated rooms for their regular events. Science Track, for example, is in the Hilton in a wing of the second floor where they're right across from the regular rooms for the Science Track. Uh, but sometimes you'll, uh, this means you'll also have a long walk between one panel on your schedule and the next. Keep this in mind. Um, and it, uh, also, most uh, events are on the they run for about an hour and then you have about half an hour to make it to your next uh, event. There are some things uh, on your schedule or that might end up on your schedule that don't line up to the usual schedule, but that's usually how things work. Uh, hour long panels or talks or whatever, and then half an hour to get to wherever you're going next. In terms of how to fill your schedule, get the Dragon Con app. The app kind of sucks. Uh, on both its Android and iOS versions. Uh, everybody is usually complaining about the app because it wasn't written f just for Dragon Con. It's a general purpose convention app. Uh, they probably saved some money doing that. Uh, they didn't need to hire uh, nearly as many custom developers, but nobody really loves the app. It's still the best way to handle everything and stay current. Uh, so just deal with it, give them feedback. They probably won't ever really replace the app, but it's important for them to hear it so that they can pass along feedback to whoever makes that convention attending app. The first draft of the schedule usually becomes available ab about a week ahead of con. So th these are the steps that I recommend for filling your schedule. Um, first, go through the full event calendar, hour by hour, day by uh, day and add everything that you might be interested in attending, even if it conflicts with a whole bunch of other stuff. Next, uh, bring up your calendar view and remove the ones you're the least interested in to see if you can narrow it down to maybe uh, somewhere between two and five events per time slot. And again, the, the, these numbers, you don't really need to adhere to them. They're just, uh, just guidelines. Then finally, when the con is about to start, you want to finish that winnowing. You ideally should narrow things definitely down to two events per time slot. You usually want to have a plan B in case an event is full or an event gets canceled or something like that. Um, and be sure to leave some room on your calendar uh, for any not on the calendar events, including meals. Um, and remove a, 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 after you a, after a day is done or after a certain uh, after you've uh, after a chunk of time is finished, you can remove the events that you didn't end up going to. And this is nice because it leaves you with a nice record slash memory of where you went. It also makes it really easy to go through afterwards and rate the events. You want to give good feedback because they care about the feedback, and each track uses it to. Um, ideally improve uh, for next year. And also I think that probably the central Dragon Con planners uh, look at generally the rated quality of tracks. And if a track isn't doing too well, then maybe it won't be included in the future. Because I've seen 
I think some some tracks disappear after a certain year, uh, at, and I'm guessing that happened at, uh, either because of poor attendance or poor ratings or maybe a mix of both. In terms of places to eat, there's not a lot of really good food near the convention area. So if you get a MARTA card, and MARTA is the local transit system, if you get one of those cards and develop just a little bit of comfort with Atlanta subway, you can easily travel north or south on the red or gold lines. And this will give you some more options for decent food. I like Indian food, so I particularly uh, like Blue India, which is just a few stops north of the convention area, um, and then a very short walk. Good food. But uh, you can do some research on Atlanta uh, food options and use the subway to get out of the convention area and actually find some decent food. If you do want to stay in the convention area, the nearby Underground Mall, it's kind of a mixed bag. It's really expensive during con, and it's not uh, very good. But some, some of the options are acceptable. There's a buffet-style sushi and noodle place that's not terrible. There's also a Mediterranean place that's okay. Um, there are some very limited food vendors out in the halls, but they're really more for the desperate. If you really need a slice of pizza and some water, you can do it, but don't expect quality. Um, the hotels have little convenience stores, which are okay. And uh, the, the Hilton in particular has a, a nice uh, little convenience store, which, again, it's, uh, it's not cheap, but you can actually get some reasonable food, uh, some of which you, you can just stick in your bag and carry with you. Um, the hotels also have their own restaurants, which are very expensive for the food you get, um, particularly the Hyatt Bar is extremely expensive and you get very small portions at very high prices but generally they're of reasonable quality whereas by comparison the Hyatt's uh, breakfast buffet can be pretty decent and the Marriott also has some uh, has a pretty decent um, uh, uh, restaurant built in um, in the upper level in terms of getting around, the main three hotels are connected by sky bridges, and you will eventually learn their layout. The other two hotels are an easy walking distance. This does mean that you'll be going outside and interacting with locals, as well as occasionally with fundamentalist protesters, um, very shouty people. Uh, the mall space uh, for the vendor halls and the autographs, they're also within easy walking distance. The aquarium is a little bit of a hike if you're going to the event there, but people walk to it together, and I think they might have buses that take you out, out there and back if you want to. Um, the, again, as I mentioned, the subway is pretty good for going north or south if you want to take a trip out of the convention area. If you're taking Amtrak to get to the convention, the nearest subway stop to the Amtrak station is the Arts Center, which is about a 20-minute walk, after which it's a short ride to where the convention is. The subway can also, I think, get you to the airport based on their signage. I haven't done this. Um, in terms of getting around at the con, the sky bridges can be pretty slow moving and can get uncomfortably hot uh, when human traffic jams happen. Um, if you decide to walk like a New Yorker, meaning you're, you're walking like you're trying to get somewhere, you can break some of the rules for lines and also make the lines better because usually the traffic jams happen because someone's being dumb. Uh, like for example, posing for photos in the hallways or showing off their fancy uh, robot on a remote control to somebody, something like that. Um, if, if you, you just uh, lead a whole bunch of people in, uh, in moving right between the left and the right side of the sky bridges, then eventually they can kind of get the point that they're blocking traffic. Um, you can also just pop out and take the surface streets, even if the if you're trying to get from uh, from a place where you could take the sky bridges. Uh, this is sometimes faster and sometimes slower than the sky bridges, and it might be hotter or colder depending on the outdoor weather and how back, backed up the human traffic is. Um, if you're easily offended by human sense, um, and I am, then uh, you might prefer to take the surface streets when you know that things are going to be pretty backed up. Although usually it's uh, it's the rarity that you'll find somebody who smells bad enough to really be noticeable. 
at Dragon Con, but it does happen. Um, if you have trouble walking for any reason, um, talk to Disability Services, um, uh, even do it before you buy your ticket. And they, they can help you with alternatives to a lot of things and make your life way better, whether you're somebody who needs a wheelchair or just somebody who finds it painful to stand for too long. Uh, they have special seating. They, they'll they really make things uh, easier for you. So don't be shy about using that if, if you think that you need it. In terms of what to bring and packing, first figure out if you're going to do cosplay because that'll decide a lot of the other stuff that you need to think about. Likewise, figure out what days you are going to do cosplay if you're going to do it. Uh, you probably don't want to do it continually unless you're there mainly for cosplay. Uh, and usually you're going to want to dress for comfort. Bring with you a USB charger and possibly a portable battery with you everywhere you go because your phone battery or your tablet battery or whatever might not last the whole day and it can suck to uh, lose power. Uh, bring a book, digital or otherwise, for when you're in line. Um, sometimes you want, won't want to talk with the people around you for whatever reason. Bring comfortable shoes because you're going to end up walking a lot while you're at con. Stay hydrated, uh, whether that means bringing a water bottle or a canteen or something like that. If you pack things very tightly on the way to Dragon Con, don't buy a lot of swag and expect it to fit into your close to bursting bags. Although if this happens, consider um, packing things up and mailing it to your home address before you go. And note that weather in Atlanta varies a lot. Um, it might be rainy, might be sunny the whole time, might be cold, probably won't be too cold outside, um, but it can definitely get pretty hot. Uh, the convention itself tends to keep things pretty cool. Uh, don't wear lots of layers of clothing, though, or you're going to melt whenever you go outside. If you find yourself needing help, the app, for all its flaws, has a map built in. There are Dragon Con help booths all over the place, staffed by volunteers. Most people are, health, uh, are friendly and will try to help you if they see that you're a fellow at attendee by looking at your badge. There are also volunteers all around elsewhere that can help, but they might be a little bit hard to spot. They do tend to have a slightly different badge, uh, or they'll be standing still and looking authoritative, um, but it, it might not always be easy to spot them if they're not at a volunteer table. Also, remember, get enough sleep. It's tempting to try and attend everything and to stay at the video, uh, video rooms late into the night, but you won't be feeling very well on later days if you take this too far or you'll find yourself falling asleep during some really good talks. Um, remember not to drink too much if you drink alcohol. Again, because you don't want to have a hangover and miss some great panels. As a default, dress for comfort. Um, if some something or someone irritates you, avoid it or avoid them. This might mean moving from one seat to another within a talk. It might mean leaving a talk. Uh, just life is too short and hopefully you have other options. Um, variety in what you attend will help you enjoy things. Uh, like if you're really into space, that's great, but you probably don't want to only attend space talk uh, panel things. Um, go to the science uh, track stuff or uh, just, just look for a little bit of variety. Um, it'll probably do you some good. You might get interested in some things that you never thought were... Uh, were interesting before. And also, as a final note, it's okay to have empty space in your schedule to decompress. People watch or to check out the video rooms uh, or whatever. Um, you don't need to pack things up entirely. Don't feel like uh, obligated just because you bought a ticket and traveled there to keep things super, super tight time-wise. Um, Maybe some personalities handle this a little bit better. Um, I like to have a little bit more slack in everything I do. So that's my advice for how to Dragon Con. If you have any particular questions, I might be able to help out because, again, I've been doing it for eight years. Um, there are some things which I can't really offer great advice on. Um, and also, uh, because I bought an Eternal membership some years back, there are some things that I go to that are mostly open to Eternals, but those are uh, those are 
uh, those are a minority. Generally, if you get a ticket to Dragon Con, uh, Dragon Con, you're going to be able to go to most things, um, uh, like the vast, vast majority of things. So don't feel particularly jealous of uh, people with weird forms of membership. Just go have a good time. And eventually, when, you, when you've when you gone for two or three years, then you probably won't need my help in terms of advice. So, but yeah, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try and get around to, uh, to answering the questions at some point. Take care. Bye-bye.